the next person who's coming to share with us, and then we've got our keynote after that, uh, is, is Kevin Hendricks. And, and he has, uh, the, the next one is Kevin Hendricks, and he's written a book called Addition by Adoption. Um, and he's going to come and, and talk about how to tell your story online. Um, and the reason we're focusing on story right now, if you guys haven't heard this theme, story, story, how do you speak your message? It's through story. We, in this room, most of us kind of have a handle on Facebook. We kind of have a handle on Twitter a little bit. Uh, if not, you, there's so many resources out there. The question is now, how do we leverage those platforms to effectively speak our message? And it's how do we craft a story? And so Kevin's going to come up and share a little bit more on that, of how do you tell an effective story. So Kevin, want to come up? Hello, everybody. Get started here. All right, uh, this is the Speak Conference, uh, and that's my dog, Speak. I want to give a little shout out to him. <laughs> Daryl, maybe next year you can be the mascot. We can work on that. Um, we're here to, t to talk tonight about church communication, uh, and I want to talk about your church's story. Uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. First, I want to talk about my kids. Uh, my wife tweeted me a few minutes ago and said they're in bed, uh, so good night. Um, I'm a work-at-home dad. Uh, I sit at the kitchen table with my laptop, and I work on the laptop while my kids play, and I tell my kids no. <laughs> uh, uh, in 2007, I started using Twitter. Um, I'm home with my, I was home with my daughter, she was two years old, uh, and I craved adult interaction. And Twitter uh, was a way for me to get that. Um, I started sharing things uh, on, on Twitter about what was happening in my life uh, with my daughter. Um, and, and I realized that some of it was kind of interesting. Uh, not all of it was interesting. The fact that I was watching NASCAR was kind of boring. Uh, the fact that my daughter confused NASCAR with her favorite movie, Madagascar, was kind of funny. <laughs> I'm glad you guys laughed at that. I kept thinking I'd have no laughter at that point. Um, so I started sharing these little parental observations uh, about things that happened, uh, and people started responding. Uh, I realized that I, I had something here. This was kind of uh, the goal of childhood that you want to share. Uh, and I thought that this might be something that, uh, that my grandma would like and that I'd want to share with her. Um, so I, I started collecting these, uh, and I thought I'd put them in a book. Uh, and maybe I can give it to Grandma for Christmas, and that'll make a nice little Christmas present. Um, so I started collecting these tweets, uh, and then something interesting happened. Uh, in between the tweets about the Taco Man song and potty training gone awry, uh, there was the story of my son's adoption. Uh, the whole thing was in there, uh, between goofy moments and, and kind of insightful things with my daughter, there was the story of, of bringing my son home from Ethiopia. Um, and then, then it got even more interesting. Uh, Twitter went beyond a tool for reporting change, uh, or lack thereof, um, and became uh, an agent of change itself. Uh, the process of adopting Milo, uh, going to Ethiopia, and, and seeing what things are like in the rest of the world opened my eyes. Uh, and I started campaigning for causes. Um, I started talking about it on Twitter and blogging about it. Uh, for my 30th birthday, I wanted to raise uh, enough money to give clean water to 30 people. Uh, so I started talking about it like crazy on Twitter and blogging about it. Uh, I, I walked down to the Mississippi River and carried five gallons of water back to my house, made a video about it, uh, just kept continually talking about it. Uh, in the end, we raised enough money to give clean water not just to 30 people, but to 130 people. Uh, it was just this huge response, uh, so much bigger than anything I could have done. Uh, so what started out uh, is a few tweets to help me as a work-at-home dad feel less alone, uh, maybe something I could share with grandma for Christmas. Uh, it turned into something so much more. Um, it turned into this book, which maybe it'll get there. There it is. Uh, it turned into this book that we put together. Uh, it talks about, uh, it's the story of my family, it's the story of our adoption, uh, and it's how we can change the world one tweet at a time. Uh, and I tell you all that not just to hawk my book, um, though I have a couple copies if anyone's interested. Um, but I tell you all that because it's a parable for how, as churches, we can, we can tell our stories. Um, one tweet doesn't amount to much. It's 140 characters. There's only so much you can say in 140 characters. 
but each tweet is the brick in the wall of your story. Uh, you have all these little bricks. You have tweets and blogs and videos and photos, uh, and they all create the, the whole wall of your story. You've got to put them all together and you have this, this whole wall. Uh, so your strategy should focus on the big picture, uh, sharing the, the overarching narrative of the gospel, uh, but told in one tiny little piece at a time. And for me, that's, that's a relief. That's a huge burden off our shoulders. Uh, writing a book about my kids, um, that's a great idea, but that's, that's a ton of work. That's never going to happen. Uh, but doing it one tweet at a time, I can do that, no problem. Uh, so I, I want to want to share that with you as, as busy pastors and, and busy church communicators. Uh, do it one piece at a time, and it, it kind of lets us off the hook. Um, there's three specific ways it lets us off the hook. Um, the first is that you don't have to tell the whole story at once. You could probably tell the entire gospel in 140 characters. Uh, it can be done. It might not be done well. It might not be done very compelling. Uh, but you could probably do it. But the thing is, you don't have to. You can, you can tell one little piece at a time. You can give, give one little glimpse uh, and, and move on and give, give more glimpses. Uh, the other thing is when your church communicates, not everything has to be holy. Uh, sometimes we have to talk about unholy things like daylight savings time. Uh, there are just little housekeeping things like that that you have to talk about, and that's okay. You have to talk about announcements, you have to talk about service times or the pastor's vacation or whatever stuff there is out there, and that's okay. The key is to make sure that those housekeeping tweets aren't dominating your stream. Uh, if, those, if those things are starting to overcome the message that you're sharing, then you're not doing it right. You need to make sure that you still have a story in your stream, that the gospel message is still there, and it's not being overcome by, you know, don't forget to set your clocks back, or church starts at 11, uh, those kind of things. Uh, the next thing is that you can share the story multiple times. Um, the story of Jesus is told in the Bible uh, four times. Um, apparently once wasn't good enough. We had to hear it multiple times. Uh, I don't know why there's not a definitive version of Jesus' story. Uh, we'll get four of them. Uh, likewise, we're not given uh, the message of salvation in the quick, uh, you know, five steps to salvation, dummy's guide to eternal life. The Bible doesn't work that way. And I think that's instructive for, for how we communicate online, that we keep on sharing the story and we keep repeating it and recasting it and, and putting it in different ways uh, for different audiences. Um, basically, reruns are okay. You kind of, you don't just tweet Jesus saves and be done. You, you keep telling the story, you keep talking about it, you keep recasting it and putting it in a different light. Um, there's stats that talk about how, how many times people need to hear the gospel before they respond. I don't know if it's six or eight times or whatever it is, but that idea is that reruns are okay. They need to hear the message again and again before it comes through. So in your online communication, tell it again and again and again. Find a different way to tell it in a different medium and keep on telling that story. Um, so all of this to sum up is that online communication shouldn't be pressure filled. It should be a relief. Um, it, should, it should be this something that's easy for us to do. Uh, if you don't nail the gospel message the, f the first time, that's okay. You can try again. Uh, if you do a video that talks about baptism, it doesn't have to explain salvation and the cross and everything. It can just talk about baptism. That's okay. Um, if you're doing a tweet about grace, it, it can just talk about grace. It doesn't have to talk about everything else. Um, if you do a blog entry about transubstantiation and you don't get it just right, that's okay. You can do it six more times and, and really nail it. Um, so don't be intimidated by online communication. Uh, don't put the burden of sharing the entire Christian faith on a single tweet, because um, that's just ridiculous. It's not, it's not going to work. Each piece of content is a brick in the wall of your entire story, so focus on one brick at a time. That's, that's all you got to do. Um, so what story are your churches telling? Uh, I kind of want to look at three different ways to tell your story, uh, to completely overgeneralize. Um, the first and sadly most common approach is to do nothing. Uh, maybe you have a website, uh, but it's not updated. Maybe you have a, a Facebook page, but there's no activity. Uh, maybe you've posted some photos, but they're all from last year. 
uh, you've got crickets in your online space. Uh, the scary thing about this approach is that you're just leaving a vacuum. And that vacuum is going to be filled by all the other wonderful things on the internet. And that's not a good thing. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Tell a story. Um, I know it's intimidating and overwhelming, um, but start small. Um, Daryl was saying this, just start a blog. Just start doing it. Start small and tell, do that one little brick at a time. That's all you need to do to get started. Another approach to communicating your story is, is to be busy. You share a lot of events and announcements and times and dates, uh, but it's all housekeeping. You're not sharing the message of the gospel. Uh, you're talking about a church that's really busy and does a lot of stuff. And that's great if people come to your stuff, uh, but it doesn't communicate anything to anybody else who's out there. Um, so give us something more. Uh, tell a story. Uh, don't talk about what you do, uh, but talk about why you're doing it. Uh, why are you bringing all these kids to VBS? You know, why do you care about human trafficking? Uh, why are you celebrating Christmas? Talk about the why, not just the what. Uh, and the final approach is just to dive in and share the full story. Um, talk about changed lives. Give those glimpses of grace. Um, offer healing words uh, to a broken world. Uh, it's messy. Uh, it's not, a, not necessarily a, a simple and easy thing to do, uh, but it's beautiful and it's compelling. That's the journey of faith that we're on, and that's what people want to follow. That's what people will like on Facebook and give the, the plus one to on Google. Uh, the church has the greatest story ever told. Uh, and, and as you're putting out uh, your, all your online content, your tweets and your blogs and your videos, um, you just need to ask, what story are you telling? Are you telling the greatest story ever told? Uh, or are you telling something less than that? And as the church, we need to tell that greatest story ever told. We need to focus on, on the gospel and, and just nailing that perfect message, because that's what it's all about. Um, so if you guys need more help with anything, uh, I write for churchmarketingsucks.com. I uh, strongly encourage you to check that out. Uh, we're also putting out a book next week called Outspoken. That's another great resource. Um, everybody else who's talked tonight has, uh, we're all well have blogs and communicate and have different resources. So please check them out. There are a ton of great resources out there. So find them and, and tell your story well. Thanks.